Okay, my name is Ava Tate, and I'm going to be talking about Robert Hooke. Okay, so who was Robert Hooke? Basically, he was known for quite a few things. He had a lot of accomplishments, um, but primarily he was known for the discovery of the law of elasticity, which is more commonly known as Hooke's law. He also improved the microscope. He didn't create it, but he improved it. Um, and he's also um, discovered the cell, and he was the first person to build a Gregorian reflecting telescope. He invented the conical pendulum, and like I said, he had many other accomplishments. And then the photo in the bottom right is an image of a um, sharp object. I'm not sure what it is under a microscope. Okay, so his childhood, he was born on July 18th in 1635 in Freshwater, United Kingdom. He was one of four children, and when Hook was 13, his father died in 1648. And the two images on the right are of Freshwater, United Kingdom. Okay, as a young adult, when his dad died, he left him with 40 pounds. And at the time, that was a lot of money. Um, today, or as of 2017, that's about 4,500 pounds. Um, and he took the money that his dad left him and moved to London to become a painter's apprentice, um, which I'll talk about for a little bit at the very end. Um, he later left apprenti apprenticeship and went to Westminster School. Um, and then after that, he went to Oxford University to study experimental science. Um, the photo in the top left is Westminster School, and the top right is Oxford. Okay, so what was happening in the world um, during his lifetime? Well, the scientific revolution began in 1600s. Um, Louis XIV rules as the last absolute monarch in France from 1643 to 1715. The English Civil War was fought between Charles I and Parliament, led by Oliver Cromwell, um, who led from 1642 to 1649. And the English Parliament also passed the Declaration of Rights, which basically just made Parliament stronger. The image on the top right um, is an illustration of the English Civil War, and the portrait on the bottom is Oliver Cromwell. Okay, so his early science career. Um, Hooke started working for Robert Boyle in 1655, and together, with I'm sure a little bit more help um, with other people, they discovered Boyle's Law. And at age 27, he became the curator of experiments at the Royal Society. He also worked in a range of scientific fields, including microbiology, physics, and geometry. He was also a very accomplished architect. Okay, so Robert Boyle was also a ton of things. He was a philosopher, a chemist, a physicist, an alchemist, and an inventor as well. He's regarded today as the first modern chemist, as well as one as well as one of the pioneers of the modern scientific method. He's most commonly known for his law of gases, um, which says volume of gas decreases as pressure increases and vice versa. So the volume of gas, as the volume of gas increases, pressure decreases. Okay, so Hooke's law, which I don't entirely understand, but that's fine, um, is the Hooke's law basically says the strain of the material or a material is proportional to the applied stress within the elastic limit of that material. And the image or diagram on the right is the Hooke's law applied to a spring. A little bit more on Hooke's law. It's commonly written as F equals negative KX. Um, and he wanted to demonstrate with Hooke's Law the relationship between the forces applied to a spring and its elasticity in return. Um, Hooke's Law is pretty important because it ensures that components can withstand a pre-calculated level of force to avoid anything going wrong in any experiment. So Micrographia, which I'm pretty sure is how you say that, is um, one of the books that he published um, and it's a bunch of descriptions and images or illustrations of the world's smallest objects and creatures that were previously unobserved by the naked eye. So you couldn't just look at a table and see all these. You'd have to look through a microscope. 
It was also the first book in English to show observations made under a microscope. The image on the top right is an illustration that's included in the book, obviously under a microscope. And then on the right, or on the bottom right, is, I believe, a cover of the book. And then here are more images of the pages inside Micrographia. Okay, so as said earlier, um, he didn't make the microscope, he improved it, and discovery of cells would not have been possible without improvements made to the microscope. So his microscope that he modified used three lenses instead and had a stage light. Um, with this improved microscope, he saw something what he called wondrous when he looked at cork. He claimed that the cork looked as if it was made of small rooms, which he later termed cells, which I'll talk about in um, a few slides or the next slide. Okay, so um, when he looked at cork, and I'm sure he looked at a number of other substances, he observed box-like structures, and he called them cells because they literally reminded him of prison cells. Um, this also contributed to the cell theory because the cell theory says that all organisms are made up of cells and that cells are a basic unit of life. And the bottom is an image of cells, and I'm not sure what substance that is, but the blue walls are the borders of the cells. Okay, so the conical pendulum, I think that the conical pendulum, I believe is how you say it, which is a weight fixed on the end of a string or rod, um, which is um, the black dot in the image that is suspended from a pivot. And it's pretty similar to a regular pendulum, except instead of moving side to side, it moves in a circle, like the dotted line on the bottom is um, the path. Okay, so he had a little rivalry with Isaac Newton, and there's a lot more to this story, but I wanted to just hit on the basics. The argument um, basically stemmed because Newton um, had tried to term gravitation and make it his own thing, but Hooke claimed that he had ideas about it a lot earlier. So when Newton published the first volume of Principia, I believe is how you say it, um, Hook demanded credit for the idea of gravitation. And then architecture. Um, he was in charge of surveying the city of London for its reconstruction after the Great Fire in 1666. Um, he proposed a modern grid development, and he was the architect behind many buildings, such as the Royal Greenwich, Greenwich and St. Paul's Cathedral. Um, the top right is a photo of modern London, and the bottom right is a photo of St. Paul's Cathedral. So he had a few more observations and discoveries. He discovered that Jupiter spins around on its axis, and he suggested that the moon and the earth orbit the sun in an ellipse. He was also the first person to term the word cell, which I said earlier because he believed that the teeny little walls looked like jail cells. And the images on the bottom are just the planets that I mentioned, Jupiter, Moon, and the Earth. So in his late science career, he became professor of um, geometry at Gresham College in London, and he became surveyor of the city of London. And then he published another book called Lectures of Spring, um, and there's an image on the right of, I believe, the cover, or maybe it's just the page under the cover. And that book explained um, the power of springing bodies, which I'm not too sure what that means, but that's what the book talked about. Um, so his family life, he was never married. And he reported, it's reported and written that he sexually abused his niece, Grace. Um, and he never had any children either, which I guess gave him a little bit more time to study science. His death, he died March 3rd, 1703 in London, United Kingdom, which made him 67 at death, and he had a really hard last year of life. He was blind and bedridden, and I also read that his legs were giving out on him. He died alone and in the middle of the night because he had no wife and no kids. Um, and apparently he was also unwashed and closed and unwashed and clothed in filthy clothes when he passed away. And on the right is a um, uh, tile in the Westminster 
um, school that is um, attributed to him. Okay, so a few interesting facts about him. In the beginning, I mentioned that he had a painter apprentice job, and he had to leave that job because the paint fumes gave him unbearable headaches. And they never found a will, but all his money was passed down to an illiterate family member, and there are no photos of him anywhere. That's why every photo that I included on here is an illustration of what they think he looked like. And his father was also a priest. These are my references.